Call to order the City Commission meeting, Monday, December 18th, 2017. Let the record show that all <coughs> commissioners are present. First thing up is the order of business. Mr. Kessel. President Decker, I have one report to add under uh, administration. I, I have handed that out to you, uh, and it would be a report by the New York uh, University Stern Business School. That would be the only addition or change. Any questions for Mr. Kessel on the uh, addition of the report? Or any questions on the uh, order of business? If not, I would look for a motion. So, so moved. Moves. Second. We have a motion to approve the order of business with a second. Any further questions for Mr. Kessel on the order of business? Not. All in favor of the uh, order of business signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> uh, next up is consent agenda. Is there anything on the consent agenda that uh, commissioners would like to discuss with city staff? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve consent agenda. Second. With a second. Any further questions, comments on the consent agenda? If not, we'll vote. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. Consent agenda is approved. We have two timetable agendas, one at 5 and one at 5.15. We'll move on to the non-timetable agenda. First up is city, uh, city Board of uh, Appointments. Mr. Kessel. Thank you. This is. Oops. Thank you, President Decker. This is the Thank meeting you. where we generally go over uh, a list of all the board appointments. You have made a couple uh, throughout uh, the year, but these are the remaining board appointments. Um, so the, there's a great many reappointments that have been requested uh, this evening. There are some changes that I would like to notify you of specifically. Uh, the first is in civil service. We have two longtime members of the Civil Service Commission uh, that do not desire reappointment, those being Rayon Killen and Irv Bran. Um, so the Civil Service Commission has met. Uh, they did review. They had, uh, I believe, four applicants for uh, the Civil Service Commission. They reviewed and are recommending Amanda Pearson and Terry Dvorak to fill the two open positions. Amanda Pearson's uh, term would expire in 2019. She would be filling the term of Irv Bren, and Terry Dvorak would be filling the term of Rand Killen, and his term would expire in 2020. Um, the, also on the municipal airport, there are two members who have also served the city ably, in Craig Steve and Ken Cousy. Um, and the recommendations from the municipal airport board uh, are um, Bruce Burke and Marcus Powell. Mr. Powell's uh, term would expire in 2020. These are all three-year terms unless otherwise mentioned. Uh, in all other uh, areas except for the Special Assessment Commission, um, Mr. Bachman does not desire reappointment. Uh, this is a board that we are having a great deal of difficulty filling. Uh, I, I believe that leaves us with no members uh, remaining on the Special Assessment <coughs> Commission. So we would like to entertain volunteers uh, from the public who are, are interested um, or anybody who would like to do some recruiting uh, on our behalf. Uh, this is a, uh, a board that we really do need some, some assistance with. So um, those would be the list of, of um, recommended appointments, and I'd stand for any questions that you may have. Any questions for Mr. Kessel on the city board appointments? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Kessel, how often does the Special Assess Assessment Committee meet? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, the, the Special Assessment Commission usually meets uh, on an annual basis uh, if we have special assessments to assign. If that's the case, then they generally have two or three meetings, uh, educational meetings, and then one uh, vote to actually make some decisions. So they, it's not a huge time commitment. Um, and it isn't necessarily annually either. We don't special assess often in Dickinson, but when we do, uh, this is the committee that makes the recommendation to the City Commission on how to do so. And how many members are we looking for? Um, Commissioner Treston, we'd like to have at least three members on that board. 
Thank you. Mr. President, is, is there any reason why we can't put flyers in uh, next month's uh, utility billing, educating the public that the openings? No, absolutely. That's, it's a good idea. We've, we've used that in the past. We've actually put it in the paper as well, so um, we can certainly use that method uh, again to try to solicit members. And uh, as long as I'm on the topic there of uh, <coughs> utility billing, uh, I pay Checkmatic right out of my check account every month. But when I get my utility billing, I still get a return envelope in there. How many of them do we have throughout the city where we're wasting envelopes? Is there any way we can check that out? Mr. I can't Steiner. be the only one going automatic withdrawal in the city. <laughs> Mr. Steiner, no, we have several. Um, I, I can't tell you a number. It's a number I can tell you at our, probably at our next meeting. Uh, and probably out in the thousands of envelopes a year we're wasting. It, it might be. And, um, the way that those uh, get stuffed is, is why I think it, it occurs the way we would have to do two separate runs, one uh, for those who do pay automatically and I'd those who don't. I'll check into it. Okay, I'll certainly do that and report back. Maybe encourage e-bill more. I know I receive my utility billing online, so. Yeah. And then we pay automatically like you do, Commissioner Steiner. Commissioner okay. Tresson, that would be wonderful if we could get more people to use e-bill. It's, uh, it's a tax savings. Uh, it's because it's an expense savings for us. That's a great uh, recommendation. Any other questions? Um, if, if the other commissioners don't have any, uh, I, on the planning and zoning, and, and Mr. Frederick could maybe answer this, are we still missing um, an ETZ representative? We are. So that yeah. might be for the general public to know that uh, we need an ETZ rep on planning and zoning. Yeah, and if you're interested, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the extraterritorial zoning representative is actually appointed by the uh, county uh, to our board. So if you are interested in serving on the planning and zoning commission, the city Senate, uh, planning and zoning commission, please contact uh, a county commissioner. Uh, so that you can uh, be appointed to the uh, city planning and zoning board. But I thank you for bringing that up. That's a good point as well. <coughs> I saw Mr. Bullinger here, so he's, he's on top of it tonight. He's <laughs> waiting that approval. So it's a good board to be on planning and zoning. So. If, if you want to know what's going to happen tomorrow in <laughs> Dickinson, that's a great board to be on. So. Okay, any other questions or comments? And I would look for a motion on these appointments. Move to approve, Mr. President. We have a motion to approve the appointments. Second. And a second. Any further questions for Mr. Kessel or staff on the appointments? Comments? Now we'll go ahead and vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mrs. <coughs> Rustam? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. The chair votes aye. The members are appointed. Next up is our financial report. There's Mr. Mori. Thank you, President Decker and members of the commission. Deputy Administrator Carlson and I worked together um, to put together a, a brief overview for you of where we're at as of December 1st of 2017. Uh, so jumping right into it, we have our fund balances some for, for a few of our major funds. Um, for our building construction fund, I know Mr. Kessel, Mr. Kessel will uh, touch on that more later in the meeting. Um, but after a few of our major debt payoffs, we're at 775000 in that fund for the fund balance. As far as oil impact, after our payments to Endeavor, for uh, debt payoff as well, and then other capital projects that we need money to transfer. We're sitting at 11.5 million in the oil impact fund. And then as of our last statement from American Trust Center, the future fund is sitting just under 7 million. Mr. Moore, the oil impact uh, balance of 11.5, but include or exclude future payments out of that fund? It <coughs> includes payments in 17, but it doesn't include the payments yet in 18 or any additional revenue that we're projected to receive in 18. So, so anything we projected uh, next year is, is, is still in that 11.5? It, it is not. Nothing, it's taken out already. Um, anything with 18, it won't be in that number at all. This doesn't include any projections for 2018 in revenue or expenses. 
just for capital projects in 17 as well as uh, debt payments that we've made in 17. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, to go along with those fund balances, um, Deputy Administrator Carlson has been working on a treasurer's report. I know she's spoken to you about that before. Um, this is a, basically a brief overview of that report that we'll be getting to you on a monthly basis. Um, but basically, to sum it up, this is our, um, our net working capital. Basically, it's our liquidity of the city. Uh, we have 117000 in our general checking account. Uh, that is basically set with American Bank Center. They'll transfer money into the money from and to the money market account you see below to keep us right around that $100,000 mark. If we you know, receive additional revenue, they'll transfer that money out into the money market to earn a higher interest rate. Um, so with that, you can see we have a total net working cash total of about $48.8 million. Uh, moving on to sales tax. Uh, comparison since 2008, uh, you can see it's been um, increased quite a bit going into about 2012, uh, in our peak years from 2012 to 2015. We did have a sharp decrease in 2016. Um, and this is 11 months collected. And this is all directly from the North Dakota State Treasurer's website. So we will have one more co collection that will go in 2017. Um, so even with 11 months collected, we're above where we were in 2016, and that will continue to increase. Mr. Mori, um, our collections in December, I, I would take it, are, are gener generally larger because of Christmas shopping. Do we have an average? Do you know, uh, percentage-wise, how much more we collect in December? Uh, at this point, uh, President Decker, I do not, but that's a number that I think we could go back and find for you. Moving on to GPT revenue. This is again from the North Dakota State Treasurer's website. Um, and again, we'll only show 11 months of collections. And as you can see, we're a little bit down from where we were um, from 14 to 16. Um, but we will have one more collection coming in in 17. The collections in October and November have been around 700,000 each. Um, so that should put us, if it stays consistent, will be about 15.1, 15.2 million to end 2017. Mr. Martin, just a quick. We don't actually collect December and December, do we? We, we do not. And that's so, why so that would be really not December's numbers in December. Correct. We wouldn't get them to what, January? Correct. That's correct. GP. Yep. And I know there's been a lot of confusion about the timing of how we collect it. So that's why I decided to use the numbers directly from the state treasurer's website to you know, try to avoid that confusion. And then on to general fund property taxes. Um, this has been pretty consistent. Um, assess City Assessor Hirschfeld does a great job of getting us our budgeted numbers each year. So um, again, 11 months collected, but we should be right on par with what we budgeted for in 17. Uh, just a brief overview of the general fund. Uh, we've so far collected 96% of our budgeted revenue and expended 94% of our budgeted expenses. Um, I know Deputy Administrator Carlson will talk about that more when we go over the amendments and encumbrances. So those numbers will change pending approval from the city commission. Um, but we are pretty close on track. Um, I think you know, our, our executive team did a good job of projecting revenues for our general fund in 17. And right now we've collected 290,000 more in revenue than we've expended at this point in the year. Uh, and then just to reiterate a slide that I think you all have seen um, at a previous commission meeting, this is just to give you an overview of our debt balance after you know making the debt payment to Endeavor, um, also paying off the ESG lease and the um, the initial SRF loan. Um, we we lowered our our debt balance from 98 million down to 92.8 million. That concludes um, the financial report portion of the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'll do my best to answer them at this time. And uh, city staff recommends approval of the financial report. Any questions for Mr. Mori? I have a recommendation. Uh, in our uh, meeting, uh, 
agenda is that we used to get the month to month and year to year of the sales tax and oil income tax uh, projections and actual deposits. Can we go back to getting those again? That would have answered your question. It would have answered my question. Oh, it's my little here. It was nice to see what, as it went along, month to month, how much, well, how we were doing. If we can get that back, that'd be nice. I, I think um, to answer your question, Commissioner Steiner, I think we can absolutely do that. Thank you. Mr. Kessel. Yeah, it, thank you. Uh, it is the intention that you'll receive a similar report to this every single month from this point forward. So you should receive the exact data you're asking for. You, the, you do remember the ones we used to get that I think were like a three year running? Mm -hmm. Oh, you want more history, longer yes. history? Oh, yeah. I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Okay. okay. Are you, are you yep. Recalling what we're looking yep. at? Absolutely, we, and we can find uh, a previous report. Oh, that was that nice given. to see. Okay, thank you. When did you stop receiving that, Mr. S I, I don't remember ever getting it. When did we stop, or the commission stop receiving it? Probably right around, well, you were on the board. We used to get month to month in 2017, 16, 15, uh, running month to month with balances across. You must have stopped at 14 then, when I first It's a nice report the, to get, I'd right. recommend it. President Decker, what we can do is forward you an, uh, one of those previous reports so that you can look at it okay. uh, and, um, and see what your thoughts are regarding how we used to provide the report. Okay. No, I, I would agree with Mr. Steiner. I, I think it will be useful, especially see the trending three-year trends. Oh, that's what's nice, mm -hmm. trending. Any other questions for staff on the financial report? Not I'd look for a motion on the financial report. <coughs> we, have Second. Mo we have a motion to approve the financial report? Yes. A motion to Sorry. approve the financial report. And a second. And a second. Any further questions or comments on the financial report? If not, we'll go ahead and vote. Mr. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Mr. Altmans? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Chair votes aye. Financial report is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is the fee, uh, 2018 fee schedule resolution. Deputy City Administrator Carlson. Thank you, President Decker and commissioners. Um, in your packet, you had a fee schedule, 2018 fee schedule, and then I also gave you a paper copy so that you can have it. Um, I especially want to, as I stated in the memo, that um, a lot of things have changed from last year. Some of the fees that uh, were looked at that we actually had were not on the actual fee schedule. And I want to give a big thank you uh, to department heads, division managers, and especially Craig um, Kubis, uh, city engineer, and his staff that worked really hard in updating this and reformatting it. I think it came out really nice as far as um, being user friendly. You can actually find some of the things. So the things that are in green as you look at it are items that were in the fee schedule and either the whole thing was added or a fee was actually changed in, on that. And then um, in the yellow part, after I had given the changes for 2018, there was a couple things that came across that said, oops, we missed this one. So then I highlighted that in yellow so that you could see from the two versions. But the one that, um, that I gave you now is the latest version, and we are I'm looking for a rec um, approval of the 2018. And I stand for any questions if you may have any. Any questions for Mrs. Carlson? Ms. Carlson? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to assume that a majority of this in green isn't green because it was not on the fee schedule before. I mean, I'm assuming there's some on there because you changed the fees, but Correct. a majority of them got to be just because they weren't on there before. I mean, we aren't changing the fees and everything that's in green here. Correct? Correct. I mean, exactly. what, I, what some I'm, might be yeah. just wording changes, Commissioner. I just want to make sure we aren't increasing fees just to increase fees and that uh, if we are increasing fees, we have a legitimate reason to increase them. You know, through our expenses. Yep, and that's why they're highlighted and anything for 18 is highlighted for you so that you can see if they've been All increased right. or decreased. 
Uh, as just a point of discussion, I was talking with Commissioner Frederick here. One of my questions was, you know, an average house uh, built on a vacant lot, what were the fees for a contractor? What they used to be a couple of years ago, $1,200. And now, with everything hooked up, they're close to $6,000. You know, as long as that represents our expenses and so on, I'm okay with that. But we have to make sure that we're, we're earning it and so on because we don't want to add a burden cost to a person trying to build a home in town. If they don't bill it because of the fees and so on, we don't collect the taxes on it. So you know, that's my concern is that you know, the cost to construct these homes are building permits and fees aren't getting out of line. Well, I think to Mr. Steinsburg, most of that increases the sewer and water hookups. Right. I don't know that the building permit fees are any different, but I mean, what is a water hookup now? Yeah. I mean, it used to be $500. Now it's 2500 I think. Uh, Commissioner Frederick, I believe it's 3000 for each of the sewer and the water sack and whack fees, I think we refer to them. Uh, and those were implemented when uh, we built the wastewater treatment plant and did the expansions of our, our water system. So it was a way for those residents that uh, weren't residents yet to pay for a portion of those uh, build costs. Uh, we didn't want to put all of the burden of That's paying That's a good that. point, actually. actually you know, I'm, I'm glad we're having this discussion. Yeah. Because I think you might see an uptick in building permits coming up in the next year or so. The things start to change a little bit, which we're seeing. I'll, I'll have um, ask um, building official Schwint to give a report. Our, our single family housing permits for this year are up dramatically over last year. Yeah. Um, so that is a fee that is incurred. But by you're all. right, we can't put the whole burden on, on the people that are here. We've we got to get some from the ones that are building for what we already paid for. If, if I may point out one more fee uh, that's listed here, you, it's actually a decrease, uh, and that's the special event alcohol permit. That fee has been higher than that in the past, and as we did an ordinance review, um, I believe Museum Director Furman caught it. Uh, there, that fee was actually referenced in ordinance, and in the past we've taken out any references to fees in the or actual fees in the ordinance and put them into the fee resolution so that it's easier for you to change those fees. Because it was specifically listed as $25 in the ordinance, we had to reduce that fee uh, to the ordinance number. So you're most likely going to see an ordinance revision um, to pull that specific uh, reference out of the ordinance and put it into the uh, fee resolution. So, and, and for the public too, our increase on our water fee is proportionate to our increase from Southwest Water. Correct. Uh, yeah, that's a, a good point, President Decker. Um, for the fa past several years, uh, the bulk water that we pay, we've just passed along the fee increase that we've received from Southwest Water. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Frederick. Excuse me, Mr. President. So when I look at this, how do I know if it went up or down? It, it, Commissioner Frederick. On the side where it says comments, it will state if it's been increased oh, or decreased. decreased. It's, it, uh, a good example would be that special event alcohol permit. First one under administration miscellaneous there that's highlighted in green. It says when it was started and it increased so many years and then decreased in 18. Does that help? So, so some of these new ones then, like adult entertainment, that was an ordinance we put in? Or did we just decide to do this fee? Actually, we have mobile have, home park. Yeah, the adult. I can attest to the adult entertainment. We actually had that. It never was listed on the um, fee schedule, so we put it in there so that we were trying to capture. And when we're doing the reformatting and going through each one of the departments and in their fees and everything, we were recapturing exactly what our fees are so that we could put them all on the fee schedule. And. If I may, Commissioner Frederick, the mobile home park is in anticipation, as we've reported to you in the past, we're taking that process over of licensing mobile home parks in the city. And so we have a draft uh, memorandum that we're working on with the state. I think very soon you'll see that memorandum in front of the commission. And so this is an anticipation of uh, having that authority. 
So that is a brand new fee for us. And you also notice under museum, all of the memberships are also brand new. Uh, they've, they've not used memberships as a, um, in the past. So. So, but, uh, so in building, so building permits are going up then. In 2018, all the fees are going up. And the Board of Adjustment variance fees going up. Pretty much everything on here is going up. Which I'm okay with if we're justifying it. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not opposed we're either. We're paying but someone X amount of dollars an hour and they're taking a half hour of time. We've got to get a half hour of salary. <clears throat> I think what would be helpful in the future when, when this is printed out and presented to us, if, if the, the last fee what we're increasing from is included. Okay. Or Just so I know we all have a fee schedule that's, and sometimes it gets lost in the pile of paperwork that we, we get. So, just add the difference. Yeah. That will be noted. Do that for next year. Yep. Any further questions for Mrs. Carlson on the fee schedule? Resolution. And I think the resolution is also in our packet, so you can view that. Do we have a number on this? 1623. 1623. Okay. Mr. President, I move we approve 2018 fee schedule resolution. Second. We have a motion <laughs> to approve 16 2017 with. Second, any further discussion or questions for staff? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Altman's? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. Resolution 16 2017 is passed. Let's see, we have time. I guess, Mrs. Carlson, you can start on the incumbent. Uh, encumbrances and amendments, and then we have the five o'clock. So okay. I'll have to maybe cut you off. That's fine. Um, the thank you, President Decker and Commissioners. I am. I have enclosed a um, amendment, budget amendments, and encumbrance sheet to you. And what this is stating is, these majority of these amendments are amending the budget due to either commission-approved requests and or um, budget amounts to um, unanticipated expenses that happen with the fund. I don't see the, the enclosure. Yeah, we don't, I don't have it either. Yeah, we don't have an enclosure, so. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, and maybe we'll just wait then. You know where I think it got stuck? It got stuck in the financial report, if we open it up. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, open that up is where it's at. It says right at the top of it. Oh, yep. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So the list <coughs> is there. Um, I showing that um, the half percent sales tax is for the armory roof, and what the what it shows is that um, it's where the funding's coming for, from, and what it's for. So you can see that um, what we would be increasing the budget for. Encumbrances, we only have three. We've used some of it, but the other ones, uh, the AEB, half more, and um, we haven't used, so we will be encumbering that for the 2018 in the capital plan, and same with the underpass signage lever indicator. That would also be an encumbrance from 17 to 18. Do you have any questions as far as the amendments or any explanations you would like me to Try to give. Mrs. Carlson, what is the Parks and Rec project? That is an, uh, unless you want to go ahead. I, I certainly can. Uh, every year, the City Commission, for quite some time, has allocated dollars to uh, the city or to the Park and Recs for 
uh, it essentially becomes their capital improvement fund. And so they use quality, or they spend it on quality of life projects throughout the community. And the armory roof uh, amendment includes the change order? Or is that that's just the flat 220 that we approved for that's the whole project? That is the flat okay. 220 that we approved. Okay. Any additional questions for Mrs. Carlson on the uh, budget amendments and encumbrances? Make a motion to approve the encumbrances and amendments. Second. We have a motion to approve. And a second. Any further questions? Hearing none, go ahead and vote. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. <coughs> the encumbrances are approved. Okay, we have a five o'clock. And our five o'clock tonight is? Uh, Mr. Yes. On the last item, um, I believe that, I might have missed it, but um, there's also resolution for city 17. Okay, so there's re resolution seven, <coughs> 17, 2017. Mrs. Murtha, do we need to uh, revote with the resolution number in it, or are we? I believe the vote can stand. Okay. Okay. So, 17 2017 is approved. Five o'clock, we have a state small business credit initiative report. Mr. Bullinger. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the commission. Um, Scott Bullinger with the North Dakota Opportunity Fund. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to present to you. I know this is probably, as um, Mr. Kessel has indicated, might be the first time that the Commission has heard about the North Dakota Opportunity Fund um, since its funding or founding in 2012. Um, the North Dakota Opportunity Fund was originated as part of the Small Business Jobs Act in 2010, um, which created the State Small Business Credit Initiative. The State Cro Small Business Credit Initiative was a limited purpose, uh, one-time um, <coughs> funding program, which essentially allocated 9.7, approximately $9.7 million to a consortium of 38 communities in North Dakota, Dickinson being one of them. Um, since 2012, I have served as the representative on the steering committee for the North Dakota Opportunity Fund, and I've also served as a secretary treasurer since that time. Um, so I sit on the executive, uh, the executive committee which effectively serves as the governing body at this time. And since the retirement of Mr. Galen Baker in, I believe, April of this year, I've also served on the loan committee for the city of Dickinson. Um, effectively, when this program was set up, um, it, it became a funding for operations for a loan participation program, which became known as the North Dakota um, Opportunity Fund, which is what we're effectively working with now. Um, up through April of, of this year, it was governed by the, uh, the Treasury, Secretary of Treasury. They were uh, responsible for administering and governing the program. Um, their authority essentially expired on September 27th, and the agreement with the, between the Treasury and the City of Mandan, which, which manages this, this operation, this program, um, expired on March 31st of this year. So effective April 1st, we entered, or the consortium, including Dickinson, entered into an operating agreement or an addendum to the cooperative joint powers agreement with the city of Mandan um, to if effectively serve as an operating uh, agreement for the program. Part of that operating agreement calls for semi-annual reports to each of the municipalities served by this program and one of those is the city of Dickinson. So this is, serves as the financial report for time period April 1st, 2017 through September 30th. 2017. I'm not sure if you uh, if you received the uh, the report um, from the you ever see, okay great um, so you've got the, the numbers in front of you um, I just wanted to highlight kind of how how effective the the program has been um, up through March 31st of 2017 
the funds, total funds that were distributed as, as a part of this program amounted to 14184000 and that is part of a, a larger uh, pool. That's part of uh, projects in the total value of $88.1 million. Um, $46.4 million came from lender financing, and $27.5 million came from borrower injection. So we were part of you know, $88 million in, in projects which helped create, a jo create jobs and new business and expansion um, throughout the state. For the period that we're talking about now, April 1st through September 30th, we funded a total of $2.659 million, and the total uh, funding that we've, um, we've been engaged in <coughs> since the uh, beginning of the project amounts to about $16.8 million. So it's certainly been an effective program. Um, we've we funded eight new projects in the last six months, um, three of those projects in the city of Mandan, one in Fargo, one in Williston, and one in Bismarck. Um, this is a revolving fund, so as the loans, as the loan proceeds are, are received and paid down and interest is earned, the um, funds become available to be relent. Um, at September or at March 31st, we did have about $4.1 million in available funds to be lent um, through payback and interest income um, at September 30th. We currently have about $4,455,000 to be lent to small businesses. Um, as far as, you know, we're, we're in the, the credit business and it does come with a certain amount of risk. We are uh, involved in, in one loan that is, is uh, currently in liquidation. Uh, we do expect a small charge off. I don't have any details on the amount of that uh, charge off or which, which loan that might be, but um, we do anticipate a small charge off coming in the near future. Um, as far as the activity, the financial activity of the actual fund, um, interest income that the fund has received from their deposits or through their deposits at banks uh, totaled over $15,000 through September of 2017. Um, total loan income through September was $1,132,000 and fee income amounted to just short of $125,000. Um, with that, the uh, Lewis, and Lewis and Clark Regional Development Council currently administers the, the actual program. Um, they're very interested in outreach. Um, they would gladly come and visit with the, uh, the city commission or any of the, uh, north or the local banks to just get their name out there and kind of what they do and what their availability is. And um, with that, I would entertain any questions from city commission. Any questions for Mr. Bollinger? President Decker, I have one. Oh, Mr. Kessel. Um, Mr. Billinger, you mentioned that you have one uh, loan right now that's in mm -hmm. default um, this year. Have you had any previous to this year? There have not been any charge-offs up to this point. Okay, no excellent. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Bollinger. Thank you. We can start our reports before our next timetable, Mr. Kessel. I believe Deputy City uh, Administrator Carlson has the 2015 audit report she'd like to give. Okay. Thank you, President Decker. <coughs> Hopefully you had this in your packet, the report of the 2015 financial. I just wanted to bring this um, to your attention of what has been... Ms. Um, Carlson, unless we, it's we under building construction yeah. fund or we anything else. It was a separate email. We don't know. Oh, so it's not attached, but it was in the original. Okay. It's, it's actually in the memo, I believe. Yeah, the whole thing's in the memo. Okay. No, I have the memo On printed there. out here, so if you want to view it, Mr. But I just wanted to bring you to an update because we are, um, city is behind in, in some of our audits, and I wanted to let you know that we are in our finalization of the 2015 audit should be finalized before the end of this month. And with that, um, just to let you know that there are some findings, and this is a comment that does go to the commissioners and um, to, to let you know what's going on as far as what the findings are during the audit. And with this, the um, audit of the audit findings are very general. 
and note that the findings um, 15 and 14 were the same, exactly the same. So I um, answered them in my management responses and I'm just letting you know that um, I think that with our 15 closing, we have more, as you saw in my management responses, we have internal processes that have improved. We've improved with staff um, separating and segregating duties and things. So um, I believe this is a going forward. And I'm more anxious to find out how our 16 actually comes out uh, once we have balanced that, the 15. But I do stand for any questions that you may have uh, concerning the management responses and or the adjusting journal entries that were presented at the end of the report. Any questions for Mrs. Carlson on the audit? Hearing none, we'll, uh, this will come up uh, do we need to approve this next meeting, the audit report? Right, when the okay. actual okay. finalization comes in, I okay. wanted you to see the, the right. letter that was being presented to them in case you had any questions and then I could answer those questions and or revise my management responses. Okay. If you do have any additional comments, commissioners, just please forward them to Mrs. Carlson for the, for the management <coughs> responses. President Decker, I have one additional comment to yep. add on to um, Ms. Carlson's report, and she can provide further details, but uh, due to the, um, the lateness of this audit and, and the, we've had several discussions, and uh, I, I'll commend Deputy City Administrator Carlson for her efforts to try to keep this audit on schedule, uh, but it is late, it is significantly late. Uh, we should have received the, the final report several months ago, uh, it does affect um, bond ratings or could affect bond ratings. It could affect many things. And so uh, we are currently seeking alternate um, uh, auditors to perform future audits for us. Uh, we haven't signed any contracts, obviously. That'll come to before the City Commission. But I just wanted you to be aware that um, we were, this audit could have gone better from the standpoint of completion. And uh, we are seeking alternatives to the uh, existing auditors. And, Ms. Carlson, if you would like to add anything, I yep. urge you. And that is very true. And as um, Administrator Kessel mentioned, we have not signed any engagement letter for 2016 audit yet. We are waiting for the finalization for 15. Okay. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> right. uh, we have not signed anything with them yet. Okay. Any other questions on this audit? Thank you, Mrs. Carlson. Uh, we have about three minutes. We can start the building construction fund, Mr. Kessel. Thank you, President Decker. Uh, the building construction fund has been referenced earlier today. It's also been referenced in a couple of city commission meetings prior to this. Um, this is the, we had about $1.5 million at the beginning of the year in, in this fund. Um, the city commission has authorized us to pay down the wastewater improvement loan, uh, which has been done, uh, the ESG loan, which also has been done, um, and um, we still have a significant amount of funds in the, the account. You, as a commission, have asked that we try to eliminate as many funds as we can, and in an effort to do that, we've presented to you um, a similar um, buy-down or, or budget for a buy-down, as you see today. Uh, when we made the actual payments to the SRF loan and to the SG loan, um, what we presented to you earlier and the actual payoff amount changed a little. So there's actually a, a little bit more money in this account uh, than you've seen previously. Um, so what we've presented in the past was the training simulator for the police department. Um, the number used in the past was 250,000. The concern here is that if we don't make an order or a decision that the, we could experience an inflationary increase in 2018. Um, it, it may not cost 260,000, uh, but we would try to err on the side of, um, uh, of at least having enough to, before we'd spend down the rest, that we'd have enough to, to buy um, the simulator. 
Uh, the, the next item is the TR Regional Airport. Uh, we have met with the uh, county on several occasions to talk about a plan to get the airport, to meet the local uh, share of the airport's uh, needs. Um, 250,000 was the number that was uh, discussed at those meetings and recommended to the city commission. Uh, the county was actually going to use a number a little higher than that, I think around 400 or 450. Um, and so um, because of our past support of the airport in terms of loans with regard to um, expansions of uh, parking facilities and such, um, our number this time was a little bit less. Um, time? Yeah, okay. Five, okay. We'll continue after. And I, I think you're still up. So the elder care, you're listed here. Oh, I, I am. But Colleen Radikowski is in the okay. audience. And uh, she has prepared a presentation for you this evening. Good evening, Mayor Scott Decker, Commissioners, City Employees, and Guests. My name is Colleen Rodakowski, and I'm the Director over at Elder Care here in Dickinson. We have about 22 meal sites across Southwest North Dakota. And the reason I'm here today is because uh, recently our Mott and Regent meal sites had to close down. And when we do lose staff and make some changes, we have to um, Advertise and hire and sometimes the cost of maintaining a meal site with employees is more more expensive than outsourcing And I'm excited to say that there's a cook in New Leipzig that is willing to partner with us And we would like to deliver meals from New Leipzig, Leipzig to Mott and Regent and um, in order to do that we needed some upfront costs and I have that on the handout for you. It's about two thousand nine hundred dollars worth of equipment something new that I added just a few days ago is that first item for about eleven hundred dollars is that packaging machine which it's the machine that takes our home delivered meals it's a tray and it seals the meal hot our biggest challenge without with delivering meals is keeping the food temps at the right level for safety we're required by by law to do that and we do do that so that's why we need that sealer to package we also put in some reusable trays so that we would have that option of using a re reusable tray for some of the meals. Um, some of the meals that take a bigger tray for ribs and chicken with, you know, on the bone and things like that need a taller tray. And then we have some high efficiency thermal bags that we want to plug into the outlets of the cars that keep that, that, the meals hot in this thermal bag unit. So. It comes to about $3,000, and I'm asking for $1,500 for your consideration for $1,500 from the Senior Citizens Center grant program through the Dickinson sales tax. Um, currently, and Sean can give you a little more update on that, once a year you give money out of that Dickinson sales tax Senior Citizens Center grant program. And I was thinking maybe you have some dollars sitting in there that we can maybe access for these upfront costs. Now we're gonna do this for a month trial because we wanna make sure it works. Um, and it feeds about 4,000 meals in region and Mott for about 65 seniors. And, um, and if, it, if it should some reason not work, which I'm optimistic it will, but if it should not, I want you to know that all these products can be used in all 22, all of our meal sites. Um, mostly to deliver for the home delivered meals is when we use this. But now that we're going to do it to the meal sites themselves, we wanted an efficient way to do that and maintain the temperature of the food. So that's um, a little bit of background. Um, one thing I do want to share with you, and I know it was on your handout, um, one of our recent legislative documents, and this is very interesting information, but from the feeding grandma and grandpa source from the 2017 legislative document that we put together for the session, um, one year of elder care meals for one, one elderly senior equals six days of costs in a nursing home and it equals one day for a senior in the hospital so we know elder care meals are so needed as the elderly age it provides that nutritional food for them if they're homebound and then for the people that eat at the senior centers and other congregate sites it provides that wonderful nutritional meal and also the opportunity to socialize so our mission at elder care is to help 
seniors remain independent in their homes as long as possible. And um, that's what drives us to do what we do. So these are just some, some extra costs coming up that I am asking um, for your consideration to keep the region and Mott Senior Center's um, elder care meal sites going. Mr. President, Mr. Steiner, Mr. Kessel, um, the Senior Citizen uh, Grant Program is 20% of the 1%? It comes from, uh, Commissioner Steiner, you're, you're absolutely correct. The 20% the, the funds more than that, but that is the fund that this particular program comes out of. Correct. Uh, I, would, I would just like to make a comment here. Uh, I, I think I sit on that uh, program that uh, distributes the money to the senior citizens. And over the years, there's one thing I've noticed about the senior citizens. When we give them money and they don't use it all, they send it back. That's uncommon and unheard of. But they're very trustworthy people. I see new lives at Mott and Regent. I would recommend we pay the whole 2897 and we'll keep in the back of our mind when it comes to this grant program. But what is your time frame, Mrs. Rodakowski? Immediately? Immediately. Um, the meal site's been down for about a month. And as we want to get this up and running um, for sure. January 2nd is what my hope is with the holidays and everybody's schedule. January 2nd is when I'd like to start start operating again. I have a meal deliver in place. Um, it's just setting up the contracts with New Leipzig um, so that we can proceed. Mrs. Carlson, for accounting sake, uh, what Mr. Steiner just um, mentioned, is it problematic? We had a carryover balance from last year. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, that's correct. We do have a carryover balance, and um, I know that we can fund it if that's the wishes of the commission. Any other questions for Mrs. Rodakowski or Mrs. Carlson from commissioners? I'd make a motion to approve the full funding. Second. We have a motion to approve the full funding mm -hmm. for the tray sealer purchase and the bags and the heaters. Uh, or the electrical, right, uh, for the heaters. Any further questions, comments? President Decker? I just want to make sure that this, the sheet that she gave us is the full amount that she's asking for. Mm -hmm. Yes, it okay. is. So, and Mr. Steiner's motion is for the full amount, the 2897. $28.97. You're good with your second on that. I am good with okay. my second on that, yep. Okay. All right, there is no further questions. We'll go ahead and vote on the purchase of the packaging machine. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Altman. Aye. Mrs. Trustum. Aye. Mr. Frederick. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll get some people through Christmas. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your support and thank you for all your support yep. that you give our community as well as elder care and public transit. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kessel. Thank you. The, uh, I believe we left off with the airport. Uh, so the next item was the parking lot. The parking lot that's uh, referred to there is the one north of City Hall. Uh, the idea, of course, uh, was to create that lot in anticipation of the uh, downtown theater uh, before that building actually gets uh, built. The library improvements, um, the library has purchased the former building um, just south of their structure and are looking to expand uh, the library itself. Uh, they, they are engaging an uh, architect, uh, so they don't have an exact amount of that cost yet, uh, but they did approach the, the city. Uh, this is, a, a, for lack of a better word, a placeholder. Uh, that amount could uh, obviously be, be less um, or more depending upon the city commission's wishes. Um, the next two items have not been present on recommended lists in the past because uh, that's about the amount that we saved or, or with that was less than we, uh, when we paid off the loans. That's not so much we had left. Um, so it is the intention of city staff to uh, sign all of our downtown parking lots. We have a great many of them. Um, we'd like to engage the Dickinson Downtown Association and talk with them about rules regarding parking. Uh, uh, each lot could potentially have slightly different rules. 
Uh, will we allow overnight parking? Will we allow eight-hour parking? You know, things such as that. We'd like to engage them, get their thoughts, uh, incorporate the, the police department and, and others in that discussion, make a recommendation to the city commission, and then sign those lots uh, so that uh, everybody is aware what is allowed and not allowed. And then the last uh, line item there is quality of life initiatives. Uh, you did hear a report uh, of a grant that uh, was made on the city's behalf by Terry Thiel of the CBB, uh, also of the Dickinson Downtown Association uh, and the city. We, we all work together. But, um, and there was four items that were listed uh, as potential funding for that grant, uh, but there was also four items that were also listed that would not be funded in that grant. And so these dollars, uh, if the commission so chooses, could be dedicated to pay for those four items that weren't funded uh, in that grant. Uh, of course, you know, that 50,000, uh, those last two items, the city commission can spend that in any way it chooses to. Just remember that these uh, building construction funds uh, was created with GPT revenue. So we do have to uh, go back to the city or to the state legislature and uh, explain um, what, how we used the funds or how we invested them. So that would conclude my report unless there's questions from the city commission. Questions? Mr. Kessel, uh, we've seen this report multiple times now. So when are you looking for action on these items? tonight. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is not a report then? No, we, we really do. You're right. Uh, we do need some action um, so that we can, it, it's, the reason it was on this evening is because of the encumbrances and the budget closeout. So uh, that was my error in putting it under report. It, we, we are asking for action tonight. So I apologize for that. Well, I have a few comments and questions. Sure. Um, as far as the airport, you said that is a, that would be a match for with the county, correct? Correct, and the county is actually higher than that. I think their number is at, at a minimum 400,000, but it may be as high as 450. Okay, and we're looking for 53,000 out of, or excuse me, 43,000 left for the parking lot. The, the, yeah, the, the current expenses, and this is again a commission decision. Um, we've we've currently have about 127.5 in expenses we've incurred on the parking lot. Um, we don't have to uh, incur a whole lot more than that. We have to stripe it. Um, but beyond that, it, it's, it's signage, it's landscaping, it's things to make it look nice. Um, but we could stop at after striping and be done with the parking lot if we choose. It also includes a fence in that 170 because there is a home located uh, between City Hall and the parking lot. We thought it would be advantageous to put a fence up to make sure that uh, there's a, uh, a barrier there. And what were the four quality of life initiatives that were not listed in that grant? Um, the ones that weren't funded? Weren't funded, yeah. Um, there were um, four different items in there. There were uh, um, uh, bike racks, uh, there were lighting, um, it was um, Plants. Uh, planters, yep. Um, and one, there's one other item. Art Apologize, Art I and sculpture. Ah, that's a thank you. Yep, the sculpture. Thank you very much. Uh, there's the, your your items: um, litter receptacles, uh, the art contest uh, murals, bike racks, litter receptacles, and art art and sculpture. We do have, by the way, a, a DSU professor uh, who is trying to create an arts council, and so we may have a champion to help us with awarding a annual grant for an art uh, or sculpture uh, or and or murals um, for future uh, items like that. So. My only comments for the commission would be, I think I'm absolutely fine with everything on the list, but I think we should discuss the parking lot and how much more we want to invest in that property. So I, would I have some that. questions myself. Okay, Mr. Frederick. How did we end up getting over 100,000? I mean, we on 831, we talked about this, and the lot was going to be between 50 and 100,000. And I made the motion not to exceed 100,000 hour at 127. And I know that doesn't include the sidewalks. That's in another fund that we took it out of. That is correct. We The sidewalks um, were in need of repair, and so we did uh, take advantage of 
of having uh, the concrete uh, folks there so they don't have to mobilize again. Um, so we did redo the sidewalks uh, adjacent to the parking lot. Uh, I think I, I forwarded uh, the list of items that we've paid for so far. Uh, it included an asbestos um, test, uh, I guess, identification of, of issues related to, to the removal of the buildings. Uh, then it was also the removal of those buildings. Um, it was engaging Bronco Brothers to actually tear down the structures. Um, what's also not included is uh, our time. Uh, we spent a great deal of time using our vehicles, removing that, um, those loads and bringing them to the landfill. Um, we also obtained cover uh, or fill, I should say, uh, free of charge, but um, we, uh, we transferred it from the fill site to the, uh, this site. Um, so it was 12,000, I believe, to remove the, the houses themselves. Uh, it was lot prep. Uh, and then it was also um, changing from an asphalt lot to a concrete uh, lot. Uh, we were anticipating that we, will be, we would be able to use uh, asphalt as our material choice. Uh, when the um, plant was shut down and moved, um, that no longer became an option. Uh, one of the options could have been to wait and do it in the spring. The concern with waiting was the construction would be taking place at that time um, and we would lose all of those parking spots. Uh, and I'm anticipating that they're going to ask, they being Odyssey, um, for some additional temporary use of land uh, for the construction site itself. Um, Obviously, they're going to have to position materials and equipment, um, and we wanted to have uh, those spaces available, uh, knowing that we'll have a great many that won't be available during construction. I would recommend that uh, you know, if they need the excess, that we provide it at a cost. Um, I'm OK with the overruns on the parking lot there because <clears throat> I know those things do come up when you get into construction. But I remember the discussion when we sold that for 100000 and there was some talk that we left 100000 on the on the table there, and we did. We could have got 200000 for that property. None of this here would be a problem. So if we're going to allow them to take up some of this parking, they're going to have to need, they're going to need to pay us for it to help compensate for this here overpricing on our parking lot. And Commissioner Steiner, we do have a um, um, history of that. Uh, a good example would be our former water building um, on Broadway. Um, the construction company that's building the Southwest Water Treatment Facility rented that building for, uh, from us during construction. So, so we do have a history uh, and we do have uh, leases that we can. So the other concern is once they have their heavy equipment on that parking lot and so on, are we going to have to go in and redo the parking lot at our cost again? <clears throat> I think we need to keep that in mind if they want to use that as construction zone, because it'll be it'll be destroyed. Yeah, and Commissioner Steiner, it's another <coughs> good question. In in our lease agreement that we have uh, engaged in the past, um, they have to return the site to as good or better than when it was. And so, if there's damage to the uh, parking lot, they would have to repair that. Have they finalized? They paid us the hundred thousand. No, they have not paid us the hundred thousand. When was the closing supposed to be? The there was no specific date uh, on the closing. We have tried in the transition. Uh, Miss Murtha is assisting with put, with uh, the purchase agreement, putting it together, and getting it to them. There is a ten thousand um, dollar down payment that they are required upon signing, um, but the full amount uh, wouldn't be transferred until the uh, spring. And we could change the terms in regards to the full payment amount uh, since that purchase agreement hasn't been sent to them yet. And I, re I requested this information in email. What is this parking lot? How, how come we haven't seen the concrete yet, the numbers? I mean, we got to break down some stuff, but not everything. When am I going to see that part? What the sidewalks cost, what the parking lot cost. I didn't see any bills in that email from Wynn, and I know he did the work. 
Commissioner Frederick, I just wanted to know that um, through that email, the request of what has been paid is the only thing that was provided in that um, email. As far as future costs of what could be done of that, I don't <coughs> have in my hand at all. We haven't received an invoice from Wynn yet. And then my next question is, is if I, we only approved 100,000, who approved the other 50% over budget that we are? Any approvals for the, the lot or the go ahead? Uh, I mean, it's done though. So, and we didn't approve over 100,000 and we've spent 127 according to that so far. Right, and I'm, I'm, I'm searching for the, I, I have a great, we've talked about the uh, lot at least five different occasions um, that I could find so far, and I know I don't have all of them yet, but I don't have the motion um, that you're speaking to. Uh, I've searched too, and there isn't one that I can find. As have I. Yeah. So I've, I know that there's been discussions of, of the lot um, back, back to October about expenses uh, that were being incurred because we talked about the houses being taken down, we've talked about the removal, um, we talked about the garages being sold and you authorized the, the yeah, surplus. Yeah, it was like $1,300. I found that, I found that in yeah. minutes. I mean, I've looked back all the way to January, so. The only, and the only thing I could find was a discussion when Commissioner Frederick and myself were absent when there was just the three of you, there was a report mm -hmm. about, I did the, find about that the cost. And it was but there was, no, there was no motion by the three commissioners here. Right, correct. That okay. that uh, was the first time that the uh, building construction fund update was provided to the uh, city commission. Well, I think we've got to see uh, how big of a hit we're going to take on this. Yeah, like I said, I want to see all the numbers too, not the <coughs> numbers that we put in the sidewalk fund, which I don't really buy into either. And the sidewalks from the adjacent properties look fine to me, so I'm not really sure why ours were so bad in those spots. To me, that's the cost of building this parking lot, so I want to see it all. We can <coughs> certainly provide that. We can get a breakdown on all the costs for the parking lot yep. and have it for January for us? I think we can if the wind provides it and um, any other construction that it might be um, also working with Engineer Kubitz to get those. Yeah, you, you have received uh, all of the co the invoices that we've received I just, to date. I just don't understand when we got reported on 831 that this parking lot, we're going to receive 100000 and the parking lot's going to cost about fifty, and we approved no more than 50 that we're at 150 now I'm not sure actually up on there it said 170 I'm just not sure where we're what went wrong in the October 16th discussion that's where we uh, talked about uh, the increased costs uh, I outlined some of the things that we've talked about here today the change from os uh, asphalt to concrete um, and made the Commission aware that they were higher than we originally anticipated. But I, I think it goes to Mr. Frederick's point is there was no resolution to or a motion to do this and it's done. Well, I think, I think we need to clean that up now. I think we need to add, um, although we don't want to, I think we're gonna have to add some money in there for the parking lot signage and maybe some quality of life initiatives in there, mainly because number one, right across the street is as Stark County is the courthouse and the new courthouse opening up. We have to keep the public out of there because that's our parking lot for our employees now, so we're gonna have to sign that accordingly. Um, the quality of life initiatives make that parking lot look somewhat uh, decent because right across the street again you have the the courthouse that, lo that looks fantastic and everything there. So, you know, before it's all said and done, I, we're going to be at 200,000, and I, I think the sooner we recognize it now, the better off we are. Well, I think there's two glaring things here. One, we need to sign that or get that purchase agreement done. 
can at least get our 100,000 from that. And if they're not willing to do that, then we have a bigger issue. Um, my second issue is we are the stewards of the people's money. And we made a resolution to go to 100,000. Yes, there was discussion above that, but there was no formal that what I can find <coughs> motion resolution to spend additional money. And then when I look at this, I'm thinking, well, that's what it cost us. But just because we took to whatever the sidewalks were out of a different fund, that's still a cost. And that's not being reported to us. I'm seeing 127.5. I'm not seeing what we actually spent on building this parking lot. I guess we have, or at least a few of us have some concerns that we need answered. And I would like a full report by January. Yeah, I, I, uh, Commissioner Decker, I have put together uh, the beginnings of that report in terms of all of the times we've talked about the lot and uh, things that were discussed you know, each time. I'm not quite complete with it, uh, but I have begun uh, and should be, have no problem bringing it to you in the first meeting in uh, January. I also remember a conversation where we said we were going to wait till spring and do asphalt. I, I, concrete was just too expensive. I remember that also. So. Okay, any other additional comments or questions for Mr. Kessel on this building construction fund? Well, I would say, Mr. President, um, I'm willing, or um, myself, I'm supportive of if we want to um, table the parking lot, but then approve the other uh, recommendations here. I know the PD has been waiting long mm -hmm. for their um, simulator, and uh, I think we definitely need to give our support to the airport the library. Right. So and, the, and the two first items are already paid. Am I right. correct? Right. That's correct. Those, those are sunk costs. Yep. And then uh, our library improvement is basically going to be sitting in basically in escrow in case they need it. Correct. It's an encumbrance. Um, okay. And if and when you'll be approached about how they would like to spend those dollars, and that's when you approve okay. their actual. Dis uh, and we're also going to encumber the par parking lot signage and the quality of life till next year, right? Or do you want a resolution on those this year? I, I don't know. I, I think we're, we're not going to get to those until next year, so I think encumbering them until 2018 is absolutely appropriate. Okay. So, Mrs. Trustum, do you have a motion formulated? Yes, what you I want to do. Pay for? Mr. President, I would move that we... Um, pay the training simulator, the TR Regional Airport, the library improvements. We want to move forward that one. Um, out of our building construction fund this evening and table the rest. Or and if, if I may offer a friendly amendment to encumber the library improvements, not pay for them. Oh, excuse me, encumber library and then we're also going to, you said, encumber parking lot and quality of life. That would be my recommendation. And table the parking lot. Yes. Well, I guess that'll be an encumbrance also, right? Because it'll be next year. Correct. Okay. So that'll be encumbered too. Do you want me to redo it? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. President, I would move that we encumber the parking lot, the library improvements, the parking lot signage, and the quality of life initiatives to next year, and we'd approve the funding for the training simulator in the TR Regional Airport this evening. Okay, we have a m motion on the table. Second. And a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Mr. Altmans? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Chair votes aye. <coughs> motion is passed. We have Mrs. Nominek up next. Oh, are, are you doing the mm -hmm. survey, or is Mrs. Nominek doing the survey? Oh, uh, I'm doing the survey. Okay. We have an employee engagement survey with presentation. There we go. So, oh. 
part of the last uh, ICMA conference that I attended in San Antonio, I attended a, a specific um, presentation on employee engagement. Uh, and the results of that um, attendance uh, are before you today. So we came back and, and um, acted upon the recommendations that they made to use an existing, they made two um, recommendations in regards to uh, an employee engagement survey that we could use. Uh, we did utilize uh, one of those. Uh, could you go to the next slide, please? Um, and conducted a survey. So when we're talking about engagement, uh, there's, a, there's a great many factors that go into how um, and why um, employees may or may not feel engaged. And it's, um, it's all those things that, um, that work can and should be, uh, including not only the things that pop to my people's minds right away, which is compensation, you know, pay and benefits, uh, things such as that, but it's, it's also career opportunities, it's training, um, it's uh, how they're, engage how they're um, asked for recommendations at work. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's all of those things that are, are before you today. It's rewards, it's um, procedures, quality of life, um, um, the people that they work with and opportunities that they perceive for um, advancement and such. Next slide, please. So the, the survey that we used was the Gallup's Q12 uh, survey. It contains 12 questions. Uh, the rating scale is from a one to a five. Uh, one represents strongly disagree and five represents strongly agree. Um, employees identified their um, department uh, on the form itself. We, we were very careful about making sure that we didn't identify departments um, too small because uh, we, we wanted to encourage people to respond and we felt if there was a, a one or two person department like planning, like um, HR, that they may not respond. And so we were cognizant of that fact when we divided up their options with regard to identifying their depart department. Um, as part of the training that I received, they said a typical response rate for a um, survey such as this is between 10 and 20 percent, uh, and our response rate was closer to 80 percent. I was very pleased uh, with the level of response uh, from our employees. We have about 185 full-time employees, and we received about 150 responses uh, from the survey itself. And then uh, Rita Binstock, uh, uh, the city administrator assistant, did tabulate those results uh, and provided them uh, to me, and then I put them together for you tonight. And I wanted to share the results with you. Next slide. So before I do that, I wanted to make sure that we put a little context around those, those results. Uh, according to, again, the training, if, if you're receiving 30 to 44 percent of the people uh, uh, are not suggesting their, uh, or if their responses are, are lower than um, 30 to 44 percent, then, then you're not receiving engagement. So, uh, so for instance, a, a score of five, 65% uh, of that is uh, 4.25, and 45% um, of, or excuse me, 55% of that is um, 3.25, if I'm not mistaken. So in order for us to fall into the high performance uh, category, um, we'd have to receive a, an average score of 4.25, and if we fell into the, um, or excuse me, I said that wrong, a score of 6.25, percent is 3.25 or higher and a score of 85 percent is 4.25 or higher so in order for us to receive uh, an engaged uh, audience we needed to score at least 3.25 or higher according to the training that I received next slide so this is actually a report of the results of each of the 12 questions that we asked um, and you can see that the, the bottom line is the 3.25. So if, if all of our responses are above that, we have an engaged workforce. Uh, the higher straight line there is the 4.25. Um, and you can see that in some cases, we were above that line. And in some cases, we were below that line. But in all cases, we were above the 3.25 minimum. Um, I was obviously excited about the results uh, that, that we received. It, do, it certainly doesn't mean that, that every employee is engaged um, because we, we, we didn't have a, a full response. And uh, some of the ones that didn't respond um, may not 
You know, we don't know what their results are. And we did have uh, some results uh, from selected employees that were lower, uh, that did fall individually below the 3.25 level. And uh, I want you to know that we, we have followed up on that. Um, this has been a topic not only in our executive team, but in our, um, our leadership team meetings. Uh, we'll be following up on the surveys um, in the departments that um, they may have a question that fell below that 3.25. Um, I've had the discussions with those department heads and we are talking about a, a plan to um, raise awareness and raise engagement with regard to those specific uh, questions. So next slide, please. Um, this is the overall, if you break down the city into three broad based departments, uh, one being administration, one being public works, and one being public safety, uh, you'll notice that each and every one of those broad departments scored well above the 3.25 engagement level. Uh, again, 3.25 is excellent, um, and every one of those departments scored above it. So I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm very pleased about the, the results. Um, you can see on the side, when we talk ab about administration, what departments are included in that, uh, they're all listed there. Uh, same for public works and public safety. So um, next slide. The, I was very pleased with not only the rate of return, but the departmental results and the overall results. Uh, it was surprising, uh, pleasantly surprising to receive uh, the results. I was expecting uh, something maybe a little bit different uh, than we received. Um, it is the intention to, to do this survey on a regular basis. Uh, in the departments that had some questions that were a little bit lower, what we may do an abbreviated survey um, earlier than a year, um, but we'll, we'll continue to do this engagement survey on a regular basis to make sure that um, we are um, doing our best to, to make sure that employees are engaged and uh, therefore productive. So I, that ends my presentation on the employee engagement survey. I do have the survey questions themselves, if you'd, if you'd like to know answers to any individual, um, or if you'd like to know the questions, I, I can share that with you. Uh, I think it was included in your packet, so. Yeah, can you can send uh, the tally on that to us? To the actual report, the finalized. Oh, you, you mean the, the, oh yeah, yeah, we can certainly do that, yep, yep. I mean so. like question number one, how many uh, circled number one, number two, three? Yep. Yep, uh, we have that tabulated, uh, and I can share that with you. Okay. Any qu questions or comments? I think it's something you need to do every year. At, um, Commissioner Steiner, we hope to do it at, at a minimum uh, annually. Uh, it may actually um, be sooner than that. It may be semi-annually. Well, I like the 12 questions because each one engages them. They have to answer it if they want to be heard. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's excellent. And the questions, like I said, uh, Commissioner Steiner, were not ones we chose. They were part of that uh, Gallup survey. Uh, so we, we simply chose the survey we wanted, the instrument we wanted to use. And we didn't vary or, or change the questions at all. Any other questions for Mr. Kessel? Okay, thank you, Mr. Kessel. Uh, Ms. Nomnik? Good evening, Mr. President, Commissioners. I have the hiring journal to report on for you. Uh, police officers, we currently have three openings. We have the position open. Right now, we have one, uh, one person in the background phase and uh, three other openings that we will be looking to fill. Uh, we had an internal opening for a corporal position that has been filled internally. Uh, animal control officer, we have a position open for that. Uh, we interviewed and are planning to reopen. We're gonna do a little updating on the job description and then get that opened up. Uh, custodian for the museum, we just hired someone. He will start this week, so that has been filled. Senior engineering tech, um, had been a very difficult position for us to fill. We've interviewed, or we've opened, we had one interview, I believe. Um, then we decided to open it up as an engineering tech. And um, I'm happy to say we did get a good number of applicants and have made an offer 
and should have a start on January 2nd for that position. Uh, street maintenance operator, we've had a couple positions open. We are in the background phase for one applicant and the other um, declined the offer, so we will reopen that up. And solid waste uh, landfill operator position, we had uh, two openings there. Uh, we filled one, have a January 2nd date, and we'll be doing interviews soon for the other position. Any questions for Mrs. Dominic? Thank you. All right, thank you. Mrs. Murtha is up next. Is this better? That's better. All right. Mr. President, members of the commission, just an update for you on the mobile home park licensing issue, which was briefly commented on during the um, licensing approval of your uh, schedule of fees. Uh, we've been in discussions, as uh, indicated during that item, uh, with the uh, Department of Health uh, at the state level to transfer jurisdiction to licensing to the city, of licensing to the city, excuse me. Um, given that the MOU, uh, the memorandum, memorandum of understanding still needs to be finalized and to ensure that there was no gaps in licensing or enforcement uh, authority uh, in conversations with the uh, Department of Health, uh, they indicated the renewal uh, period begins January 1st. So they are going to renew those licenses uh, effective January 1st. However, they were going to include with those renewals a notice to all licensees indicating uh, that there is an expected transfer in jurisdiction of licensing to the city that uh, will become effective sometime during the 2018 year. Uh, in addition, uh, as was uh, discussed, that there is now a fee that will uh, on your schedule of fees for this. However, that will not be again utilized until um, all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted with regards to the MOU. Uh, the state uh, representatives from uh, DOH have indicated that, that they will not charge a licensing fee upon the renewals effective January 1st so that the licensees are not charged both by the state and the city in 2018. Uh, so that will also be included in the notice. And we just wanted to bring that uh, to your attention because those uh, renewal licenses and that notice will be going out within the next few weeks. Any questions for Mrs. Martha? Um, I guess I, I have just one, and, and I guess it could be dual for, for you or Mr. Kessel. When we sign the memorandum of understanding, we take over licensing, but we also take over some additional duties with, could you explain some of those? Yes, there'll be inspection and then enforcement authority for failure to um, meet the regulatory requirements uh, that the licensees are held to. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the whole, I should say, the whole uh, regulatory oversight will be transferred to the okay. city. All right. And if I could add, I'd, I'd just like to mention that the, the regulations that will be enforced will be the city's adopted regulations. No longer will we adopt um, or enforce the state's. Ours are more restrictive. Uh, and so that'll be the data set, the building a code that we'll uh, enforce. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Moving on, we have the fire department up next. Chief Sevok. Mayor Decker, commissioners. Recently, nine of our members invested 84 hours of their time in uh, becoming highly trained in the delivery of emergency medicine for the citizens of Dickinson. They followed a emergency medical responder course that was presented to them by the Dickinson Area Ambulance Service. This course met national standards in emergency medicine, and this course is authorized by the Division of Emergency Medical Services and Trauma, North Dakota Department of Health, and I wanted to bring your attention, bring their names to your attention because it was quite an accomplishment on their part. The course began September 6th, concluded December 6th. They met two days a week every week through that time period. We have firefighter, fire marshal Mark Selly, firefighter Andy Hurt, 
Dustin Hoffer, Kyle McIntosh, Tyler Berger, Stephen Lawson, Brad Banyai, Jose Serrato, and Jared Rohde that successfully completed the emergency medical responder course. They join members on the department that have already been trained to the emergency medical technician level and our assistant chiefs, Curtis Freeman and Deb Barrows, firefighters Gypsy Fouts, Tyler Scott, Elena Decker, and Seth Oline. So now 32% of the Dickinson Fire Department has been trained in providing emergen emergency medical care to the citizens of Dickinson at a level higher than just first aid. We're very proud of them and we wanted to bring that to your attention. That concludes my report. Thank you very much, Chief. Mr. President. Chief, yep. how many full-time uh, firefighters do you have? We have 10 full-time firefighters on the 24-hour rotation. There's 16. So we employ 10 full-time. Yeah, well, right. In, That's in our the fire department, how many full-time people? Six, counting my admin assistant, 16 people. 16. Uh, and of the full-time, how many of them are uh, trained in that responder and or medical technician? Everyone except our latest hire, who will be getting it next year. Super. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Chief. Before we move on to Captain Wilkie, we missed out. I was waiting for, I was hoping Mr. Kessel would get back. You had an additional report, the NYU report. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, I just wanted to bring to the Commission's attention that um, part of the Aspen Institute on Oil or Shale Governance that I attended, um, we had a, a group, um, a member of that. Um, Aspen Institute brought two graduate students with her uh, to visit North Dakota. Um, President Decker and I uh, toured them around uh, for a, a couple of days, showed them what oil impacts look like. Uh, we also went to Bismarck and uh, learned about the DAPL response uh, right from uh, the folks uh, who had to deal with it most. And so they have compiled then a report um, based on their experience on uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, and I presented that to you. This is in draft format, so this isn't quite the final product, but I wanted to just share it with you, um, kind of to outline a couple of things, you know, the, the impact of, um, you know, Dickinson on a broader policy perspective with regard to uh, oil governance and, uh, and the influence that, that we have had uh, not only nationally, um, but in, you know, the Stern Business School. Um, very specifically, they'll be talking about uh, North Dakota and the experiences that they had here. Also from that same group, uh, that As Aspen Institute, um, Mr. Daniel Ramey is uh, a professor. Um, he teaches at the University of Michigan, and he has asked uh, me to be a guest lecturer at his um, class um, so we can talk about oil impacts. And I'd, I'd be doing this remotely via Skype or some other uh, method. But uh, again, it's, it, these connections and these relationships um, are, I think are, are quite important um, because these are folks that, that influence national policy. And Mr. Ramey just published a book uh, as well. Um, he also works for what's called Resources uh, for the Future. And they are an influential uh, policy-making group um, with regard to oil governance. So uh, she is looking for feedback. If any of you, as you read through that, have any feedback on the uh, ESG uh, Dakota Access Pipeline report specifically, I'd, I'd love to, to hear it. And I will certainly uh, share that uh, with her. So that will conclude my report unless you have any questions. Any questions for Mr. Kessel on the NYU visit and report? Uh, their um, article, I guess. I, I guess the only comment I would have is the, the one young lady was, that was on site with us after touring a rig. Um, I can't remember what her major was. They are all were master's students uh, in um, um, business. I think. Yeah, business governance. Uh, or, right. Or, yeah. But she made the comment. She said, I think I'm going to change my, my degree to petroleum engineering, <laughs> is what she said. As she, she was very impressed with the, uh, the work site, so. I should say thank you to ConocoPhillips for allowing yes, us on the yes, site. Yes, very much so, yeah. ConocoPhillips. So. I've, I've read the report. Uh, it's a good report and, and so on.
but I wonder, uh, did they attach the last page to this report as part of the report? Because it really throws a slant into the report. And it's the op-ed by Dave Archambault. Commissioner Steiner, they did. Um, one of the, we tried to get an appointment with um, Tribal Chairman Archambault while they were here in North Dakota and we were never able to do that. They tried independently to have conversations and I know they had a difficult time trying to contact him directly. So that was included in the report. I don't know if it'll make the final draft it's or not. It's a good report and, and with the contribution by Archambault is okay if there was another perspective of someone other than Dave Archambault attached to this report. This slants the report to, to me in a bad way. I mean, I mean, it's everything that I think about when I think about East and Coastal and universities and so on. And what we had to put up with, with that DAPO uh, protest down there. And so this good report, lousy attachment without another one on it. So, Commissioner Steiner, your feedback would be to eliminate that op-ed. My feedback would be to either eliminate that one or add one from uh, an opposing the other side. side. Make yeah. it fair. Okay. Point. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments for Mr. Kessel? <clears throat> okay, we'll move on to the police department. Captain Wilkie. Good evening, Mayor Decker and Commission. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the Harris, Co uh, Harris Corporation Critical Communication Support Agreement. Um, I felt there was uh, probably a couple things I need to explain. First of all, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about our radio system that the police and fire department use. It is the, uh, the Tate communication system. It's a microwave system that um, First of all, in, in between 2011 and 2014, we realized that as our communities was, was growing and our jurisdiction was expanding, that the um, radio system that we had in place was w uh, far inadequate. And so we began a search for a new system, and the, the system was that we were looking for would um, improve our local radio system. So T Communication was part of the group that uh, did a presentation here in town. We were very impressed with the work that they did. So by committee, we chose Tate Communications to design and install a new system here in Dickinson. Uh, basically what we had, to, first of all, was we had one transmitter. It was located on the water tower over on 4th Avenue East, and that covered the entire city for both the fire department and the police department. The Tate system offered us three transmitters, one over at Radar Base Hill, one on the Ford uh, the 4th Avenue location, and then one again over on State Avenue and 15th. Um, the way it works is it triangulates across the city, and whichever one of those sites is receiving the strongest signal, it transmits to our radio. So we're always, always receiving the strongest signal from our radio system. Um, the Tate system also gave us much greater coverage within buildings, and it also gave us a greater coverage outside um, it gave us a greater range outside. A uh, little bit of history just to kind of let you know how we got to this point where we are today. Uh, in September, we signed a certificate of completion of work with Tate. When we signed that certificate of completion, both the fire department, the police department, and Tate understood that this system was not at 100% satisfaction for any of us. Um, the certificate of completion was actually signed because of the fact that I had a oil impact grant that was paying for this system. And if we didn't sign the agreement and we didn't get the, um, the payment submitted, that that grant was going to dry up and we weren't gonna be able to make the payments. So at the time when the agreement was signed, like I said, everybody knew that this system was not 100% functional. In October of 15, we signed a one-year support agreement with Tate, which covered all of our services. It covered 24-hour uh, tech services, and um, that worked really good for us. 
In October of 16, that unfortunately, that agreement ended. The DBD and the fire department continued to re receive um, assistance from Tate on their 24-7 help desk, even though we still were at the point where the system was not 100% functional. Um, the diagnostic was done by Tate in late 16. It was found that one of the problems that we were having was there was a factory defect on one of the critical pieces of, of equipment. That piece was replaced, and um, we, we were hoping that was going to fix our troubles. Early 17, we still understood that we were not happy with the system and that things were not going as, as we had been promised. Mid-17, the, the city was informed that we're no longer going to receive help desk services from Tate. And in late 17, we were finally contacted by Harris Communications stating that they would be taking over the uh, critical communication support for Tate. Now, Harris did not purchase Tate. Harris is supporting Tate in the United States. Uh, Tate is actually based out of New Zealand. Is Tate still in business? Yes, they are. Okay. So here's where we are today. We are looking at an agreement with Harris Corporation and the city of Dickinson. The contract is a five-year contract, and the contract begins upon the execution of the contract, which means we sign it, we pay for it, everything starts. I'm sorry about that. Here's just to explain the scope of work and what this contract will cover. It covers 24-7 help desk services, which will give us a single point of contact within the United States for our dispatchers and officers to call when we have issues with the system. Also gives us a tech link portal, which is um, access to the customer service portal and technical resources website. Allows us, or I should say, allows Sergeant Mike Hannell to fix some of, these stuff, some of this stuff without the assistance of uh, Harris. Um, also, we have a DSW maintenance, which is our software maintenance. Uh, what they will do is they will send us regular updates to our software and give us technical support with that update. Uh, we also get an extended warranty on the products that we already have it in place. So if we have, uh, let's say we have a Mimo Max that, is, that actually has only a manufacturer's warranty of one year, the extended warranty given to us through Harris will give us a warranty on that piece even though the manufacturer's warranty is up we'll have another continued five years of warranty on that piece. And then we also get an annual consultation, which is a, a professional from Harris will come in, or a professional from Tate will come in and do a complete analysis of our infrastructure. And um, with that analysis, we can make any fixes that need to be made or any improvements that need, need to be made. This is contract will cost the city of Dickinson 20000 $740 annually. Section C of the contract is our general terms and conditions. It's, it's stuff that, that Mrs. Bertha will understand for the most part. For us, really the most important part is the replacement and spare parts. One of the things that we had through our Tate contract of service was that we needed to have basically a uh, a spare, spare parts for every piece that was in our Tate system, which is probably another added cost of over $100,000 plus. One of the things that we were able to negotiate with Harris was to eliminate the list of, of, of spare equipment. So in this contract, we don't need to purchase any other equipment other than what we already have in place. Glossary of terms is exactly what it says. It just defines all the terms of the agreement. And then the attachments. Attachment A is our system details, which just tells them all the equipment that we have in place. Attachment B is our site locations. Attachment C has been eliminated by our agreement. Attachment D is our manufacturer's limited warranty, which then we can base our new extended warranty on. And then 
attachment E is a statement of work should we choose that optionally. Were there any questions? I have a few, but I'll let the other I'll, I'll start commissioners. Out. I'll start out if that's okay. Um, so this is a system that was put in the public safety building upon completion of the new building, correct? No. This actually came in prior to the new building being So we moved this system over from our old building to the new public safety? The only thing that we moved was dispatch. So what, what we have in, in three locations at the water tower on 4th Avenue, at the radar base on out in east of town, right. and then on 15th and State, we have three transmitters. Do you know what our cost for the Tate came the, to? The overall cost, I want to say it was 200000 plus. 200000 Okay, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, I have no problem with what you're requesting from Harris and so on. Harrison? Harris. Harris Corporation. Harris Corporation. I, I think it looks like a lot of good things are put in place that should have been put in place with, with Tate. So we have never been 100% satisfied with this system, correct? Otherwise, you wouldn't want to be replacing it now. Oh, we're, we're not replacing it. This is a maintenance contract. This is a maintenance contract. So, so you want a maintenance contract to keep it to replace the no. Tate that was doing maintenance on this? Okay, w what has happened here is, is Tate is no longer offering the the uh, critical communication support contracts here in the United States because Harris has taken over that okay. job for them. Okay. So this is the, this is basically the same contract that we had 2015 to 2016 with the exception that we got them to drop the list of, of spare equipment. So the only reason it's coming up is because it's Tate is no longer doing it. We got to find someone to do it. The, the reason it's coming up is it's going to cost 20000 a year. Yes. Yeah. Right. Which is an expense of an ongoing business like the police well, department, fire yes, department. Yes, it's, it's a critical piece. I mean, we yeah. couldn't, we couldn't, and the fire department, yes, we can do our jobs without the radio system, but it is the radio system that gets us to our jobs. So it, it is a very important piece of our job is the radio, the communication system. Okay, thank you. Mr. President. Why didn't Tate make the system satisfactory? Why, why, why didn't Tate finish their job and make the system satisfactory? Tate has been working on it. That's why we got the extra 24-7 help desk. We've, we've had um, uh, electronic communications come to our locations on several occasions where I don't believe that we've been charged. I believe that Tate absorbed those charges. They really have gone out of the way to make this system work for us. There's something, there's, there's some ghost in the machine that um, we haven't found yet. And um, I think the um, fire department has been suffering with it more than we have at the police department. Uh, up until about a month ago, they they would get a series of like what would sound like an open radio, if, if you understand it. Like if I have my radio here in ha my hand and I push the button and I let it go, that's when you push the button, that's called an open radio. They would get those clicking sounds in their system. We weren't hearing it on the P PD side because we are digital, where they're analog because of their um, pagers. But we were also uh, we were also seeing. Uh, some difficulties, and we think we've got ours taken care of, but I, I'm, we're not 100% sure that the fire department has. Part of this, part of what Harris is offering us with the, uh, with them coming in and doing an analysis of the program, of the system and everything is that, you know, we, we now have ECI is going to be our boots on the ground, so we can have them come up any time that we need them to, to, to work on our system. Any questions on? Well, I guess Go ahead. Captain Wilkie, um, you have. Some I was just wondering what, whose budget the 
twenty thousand a year. Is that a shared where, where this gets paid out of? Yeah, Fred, or, uh, Commissioner Frederick, they'll be splitting that cost between the police and the fire department, um, and it'll be within their existing budget. Okay. Yeah, has the system ever been one hundred percent? No. Okay. But I would say at any time it's 99%. Okay. But then you al we always, it's that, you know, it works perfect up until it don't work. Okay. And for us it was, uh, it was a, um, I think the, big, the biggest part is there was a piece of machinery that was backlogging things. So once it got to a certain point, then our system would shut down. All we have to do is reboot it. And it worked perfect again. So for the police department, it was it, it works it works very well when it works. And then it, I'm sure you're well aware of this, the siren initiative throughout the state that they want to yes. implement that. Do you have an idea when they want to implement siren? Well, I th think if they could find the money, they'd want to implement it next week, but okay. That's going to be part of the issue is finding the money for it and then creating the infrastructure for it. See, my concern is that we signed an agreement for five years and in two years the legislature comes up with money and we switch over because I, I think everybody is going to have to switch to be compliant because it's, it's going to a complete digital system if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, um, and we are digital. So right. really the only thing that we would you know, it, our department, the police department, would have to do is just switch over to whatever, whatever channel they wanted us to switch okay. to. I, I believe you're right. I, I think there's a probably a very good chance that that's going to go forward. But if you look at it logistically, even if you're talking about it, that's going to be improved in two years. If it does get improved, you're looking at probably two years until it's fully functional. It, and this is the shortest agreement we can sign as a five-year with them? This is the shortest agreement we can that's that my concern if for some reason in two years police and fire are back in front of us and we're having to buy a different system we're still tied contractually to this maintenance agreement for well I, I would also offer this to you one of the things that is going to that has been required since 9-11 has been redundancy so should this system statewide system come into place we're still going to be required to have a redundant system that's going to work for both the fire department and police department should the statewide department go down. Now, unless they're going to go completely to satellite, you cannot rely on anything, on, on anything that you're going to get reception at any point all the time. I, like I said, I, I, uh, my biggest concern is that we're investing hundred thousand dollars basically in a five-year agreement and then we switch out but if the radio is going to still be in play even if they pass the money in two years it'll be a year before it's implemented anyway so I, we're I probably looking at three years um, how soon are you looking at you looking for this evening yes sir for um, our, okay. we have money in our uh, I believe one of our um, technology funds that we'd like to use before the end of the year <coughs> and also just you know I, we, we plan on the police department plans on paying the entire 27,000 this year we'll wait till 2018 to split it with the fire department so we'll give them about a week <laughs> <laughs> No, if you're so, ready, Mr. President, yes. I'd move we I, approve I, If the there board. are no other questions, I guess I would look for a motion on this item. Mm -hmm. I'd move we approve the radio contract as presented. We second. have a motion to approve the contract with a second. And I guess my only other contract uh, comment would be is, is Ms. Mrs. Murphy, you've gone through all of the legal. Okay. Okay, um, we have a motion to approve the contract with a second. Any further questions or comments? I will go ahead and vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. Contract is approved. Thank you.
Okay, next up we have engineering. Uh, Assistant City Engineer Marshak. Good evening, President Decker, Commissioners. The first item before you is for the 8th Street South Construction Engineering Agreement. This engineering agreement would engage Highlands Engineering and Surveying to perform construction engineering and contract administration services for the DOT funded project on 8th Street South. I believe you got a copy of the DOT letter that awarded the project, which was approved at the commission meeting November 20th, 2017. The city staff has reviewed the scope and fee with Highlands and we're recommending approval on that project. Do you have any questions for me on this item? Any questions for Mrs. Marshak on the 8th Street Construction Engineering Agreement? Hearing no questions or comments, I guess I would look for a motion. Move to approve 8th Street South Construction Engineering Agreement. So Second. We have a motion to approve 8th Street Engineering Agreement with a second. Any further questions or comments? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll go ahead and vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. The agreement is approved. Thank you. And the next item is the DOT grant application. This is a planning grant that the city has approached the DOT about applying for. It's a regional planning grant, so it's the same thing that we use to fund this, if you recognize this document um, in 2013. So what we would be looking to do is an update to that. So with your... Um, permission, we would like to submit a letter to the DOT to apply for this grant. Uh, there are, we currently have dollars already allocated for 2018, so it would be our intent that these funds that we're looking at would be 2019 funds, but we would like to get everything in order and get lined up to do this kind of update on this study in 2019. There isn't a set amount for what we're applying for, but we anticipate the award amount to be in the $250,000 range. So we would like to submit that letter with your approval, and that's what I'm looking for this evening. Okay, any questions for Mrs. Marshik? I'd make a motion to approve the grant application. I have a motion to approve second. the grant application with a second. Mr. Kessel. President Decker, before the vote is taken, I want to make sure that the Commission is aware that this is either a 90-10 or 80-20 match, and so there will be dollars that we'll spend. Uh, we're trying to figure out uh, from that. We've asked the state what is the actual match. They haven't responded to us yet, uh, but the intent would be to use GPT funding in 2019 if we receive. Okay. Any questions or comments for Mr. Kessel on this? Now we'll go ahead and vote. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. Um, grant application request is approved. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, lift station one. Mr. Zuroff. Uh, President Deckard, Commission, uh, the lift station one uh, has been on our capital improvement plan for a couple of years. Uh, Apex has done the preliminary engineering preliminary planning on that. Uh, Mr. Berg with Apex is going to give you the uh, preliminary planning results and the recommendation and direction for design and construction for the lift station. Okay. Good evening President Decker and members of the City Commission. Uh, tonight I'll talk about the lift station one planning effort. Before I get to that I'll take just a minute to uh, talk about how this need was identified and how this project fits in with the the uh, 2012 master plan. We'll cover the background, go into planning, and then touch on uh, pending improvements. So this map is from the, uh, the city of Dickinson in 2011. <coughs> the areas in green were areas that were projected to grow at that time. The master plan had 
two main goals. One was to determine the capacity of the existing system and also to determine the best method of um, serving pending development with wastewater services. Uh, the recommended approach was to direct most of the wastewater around to the west of the city and through the south of the city out to the water reclamation facility, which is in the southeast portion of town. Uh, the other part of that uh, of the study was to look at existing capacities, and one of the deficiencies identified was lift station one. Uh, lift station one serves primarily the western and southern parts of the city. Uh, this map is a map of improvements from the 2012 master plan. Um, the improvements highlighted in yellow have been completed to date. Uh, the improvements highlighted in green are uh, pending improvements. Uh, south Gravity Sewer in the south part of town is in design. Uh, project we're talking about tonight is lift station one. And then in the uh, northern part is lift station 11 improvements, which will be a future project. So uh, lift station one was, was our, uh, our planning effort that we did this year. Uh, here in yellow, you see the collection system that is served by lift station one, primarily the southern part of town and the western part of town. Uh, lift station one has a, uh, is a submersible type lift station. This is a view in profile, not quite to scale. What you have is a wet well that is 40 feet deep. Water comes in here on the left, drops down into the wet well, is pumped by the pumps up and out into the valve vault, goes into the force main and onto the water reclamation facility. This station has three submersible pumps in it. And this part of the station that's below ground is by far the most valuable part of a lift station like this. The, the concrete portion that's below ground, 40 feet deep in wet, sandy soils. Uh, this is the superstructure for lift station one. It's on the south part of, south of Broadway. In the background, we see St. Joseph's Church and TMI. Uh, the superstructure was constructed over the existing lift station. Uh, the controls are within the building and the generator. Uh, this works to protect it from the environment, outside environment, but um, uh, there's a lot of corrosive gases in wastewater, so this isn't ideal for electrical equipment in the generator. So the, the next step for planning is to figure out how big do we need to make this. Uh, in wastewater, our peak flows really occur during rain events. Uh, water enters our collection system through manholes, defects in pipe, and people's sump pumps. So this graph is of a half inch rain event, which is signified by the blue lines at the top. Uh, the lines along the bottom of the graph are the normal wastewater flows to lift station one. And you can see that shortly after it begins raining, we get an extra 350 gallons per minute into this lift station one. So we take those rain events and we plot them on a graph. And those are the, the rain events are plotted in blue. And we look at a trend line to try and predict how much water will come to this lift station in a 10 year rain event. And that's the number that you design a lift station for. So that during those 10 year events, the lift station can deal with all the water without uh, backing up uh, water in the collection system. And then we look at the wet well. Again, most valuable part. Is it big enough? And what kind of condition is it in? Can we reuse it? Well, in this planning effort, we did a physical inspection of the wet well. And here you can see a person down in the lower part of that wet well doing concrete inspections. And this is a real corrosive and aggressive environment. Um, the inspection went really well. Uh, the concrete, there's corrosion there but uh, there's enough concrete strength or strength in the concrete that we can rehabilitate it without re replacing that wet well. So that was, that was great news. Uh, it's also large enough to uh, allow for the future flows with replaced pumps. So now we'll talk about the uh, planned improvements. 
Uh, first, it would be a new superstructure on top of the building with an isolated room for the electrical controls and the generator located outside of the lift station. In addition to that, we have new pumps down in the wet well. We would rehabilitate the wet well and valve vaults, uh, new electrical and new control systems. The preliminary estimate for this project is uh, just under 1.5 million plus the location factor of uh, two point, uh, or 223,000 or 15% brings us to a construction subtotal of uh, just over 1.7 million. Uh, the current schedule is to complete design in July of 2018 and uh, the bid schedule isn't set yet. And that concludes the presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any when questions you, for Mr. Burke? Yeah. When you take a location multiplier, is, is that for the cost of moving a construction company here? Well, and if it's a local company, and I don't know if we have any local companies that can do this here, so is that okay. something that's going to cost us regardless? Yes. Um, President Decker, Commissioner Steiner, um, the location factor really has to deal with our, um, our uh, construction cycle during times of rapid development and uh, you know it's not a it's a uh, not a boom bust cycle exactly but there are times when our construction costs go through the roof and times when uh, all the contractors are looking for work. Okay. So Schneider, it's not necessarily the companies itself it's the cost of the market. construction market yes all okay. right. Thank you. It's the Bakken premium we've talked about yeah. in the past. And, and Mr. Uh, Commissioner Steiner, uh, we've had lately haven't had that 15% factor, but uh, conservatively we budget for it. So. Yes, that, that's correct. Um, currently, uh, you know, this last year, um, contract contractors were very competitive on projects. So our location factor was 30% before? In our, um, President Decker, um, in our, uh, our projects, I don't think we've seen over 15%, you know, even in the 2012-2013 range. Um, and lately, uh, lately we haven't seen it. So um, sounds like things are picking up. So it's hard to say what it'll be like in 2018. How many bids do you expect to receive on a project like this? The uh, we'll receive typically between three and and five bids on a lift station like this. Um, the bigger the lift stations are, we start getting contractors from out of state. On a one and a half million dollar project. I, I don't expect to get out-of-state contractors unless they're here already in town. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Berg or uh, Mr. Zero? So you're looking to put it out for bids or proposal? Are he at this time? Or? No. Well, they do have a consideration to approve a task order for this. Yeah, Commissioner Steiner, it's a task order for continuing and doing the design services. We've done the preliminary planning, now it would be design services. Hearing no other questions, I'd look for a motion on this task order. Move to approve task order. And, okay, we have a second. I'm just looking at task order number up here quick. <coughs> I think it's on the documentation, if I'm correct. This is a, amendment uh, one of task order number 22. Task order 22. For phase okay. two design services for the amount of $127,300. Okay. So we have a motion to approve task order 22's amendment, right? As stated, with a second. Any <coughs> further questions or comments for Mr. Zeroff or Mr. Berg? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Altman? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Chair votes aye. Task Order 22 amendment is approved. Moving on, we're going to planning. Chapter 39, zoning pet daycare. Mr. Hadley. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, this is the second reading for the pet daycare amendment. Um, 
and it's uh, ordinance number 1647. There haven't been any changes, and staff would still recommend approval of this. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Hadley on 1647? We've already had the public hearing, so <coughs> questions, comments before we go ahead and. I would make a motion to approve the second reading and final passage of ordinance number 1647. We have a motion to approve 1647. Second. With a second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? No. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. 1647 is passed. Mr. Hadley, public hearing on Chapter 39 Zoning Airport Overlay. Yes, there's a second item is a uh, Chapter 39 Zoning Airport Overlay Amendment, uh, Ordinance 1648. It is the second reading of that. Um, it is a public hearing because we didn't <coughs> do a public hearing at the last meeting. Okay. Um, staff would also recommend approval of this ordinance as written. Okay. We have a public hearing for 1648. Um, before I open up the public hearing, are there any comments, questions for Mr. Hadley? No comments or questions? Okay, I'll open up the public hearing. Anyone from the public who would like to come forward, state your concerns or any questions on 1648, the airport overlay for the City Commission to hear. Seeing there is no one from the public, we'll close the public hearing. Again, Commissioners, if you have any questions, comments on 1648. I think they've done an outstanding job, uh, both the airport and the commission, to get this uh, overlay done. I think it's really going to lay the airport out nicely for future expansion. So. I'd make a motion to approve the second reading and final passage of ordinance number 1648. You have a motion to approve 1648. Second. second. With a second. <clears throat> Any further questions or comments? Hearing none will vote. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. 1648 is passed. Mr. Hadley, we have a development agreement. Yes, Mr. President, this is the development agreement for Diamond Acres Second, uh, which you approved a few months ago. It's directly south of Saks Motors. Um, the um, city engineer and city attorney have reviewed this along with the planning staff. The conditions definitely reflect what uh, your intent was when it was approved, and staff would recommend that you make a motion to approve it. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. Um, any questions for Mr. Hadley or comments? Do we have an agreement number, Mr. Hadley, on this? I'm sorry, sir. What did you say? What did you ask? Is there a, an, a, any, any number on this agreement? I don't believe you, you okay. do it as a resolution. I think it's okay. a simple motion. Seeing no questions or comments, I'd look for a motion on this agreement. Move to approve, Mr. President. We have a motion to approve the development agreement with Diamond Acres. Second. And a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none will vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frederick? Aye. Chair votes aye. The agreement is approved. We have nothing from building and codes. Commissioners, do you have anything? I just have one thing. Uh, Mr. Kessel's annual review is sent out. Uh, hope to get it back from you by the end of the year. Uh, and then we will, he is on his last year of his contract, so we will begin negotiations next year. So looking forward to your review. Anything else from commissioners? If not, is there anyone in the public who would like to come forward? Has uh, any issues of city concern that are not on our agenda? Please come forward and state your name.
What a meeting you have, my gosh, this was major. It seems as though everything was so critical and important and major that I feel that what I have to discuss is... Ma'am, ma could you just state your name for the record? Oh, I'm True White. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, it seems as though what I'm wanting to talk about is almost frivolous compared to all this major stuff. But the reason I feel I had to stay and do it today is because in the paper, the public uh, notices said that you're going to, uh, you, you are, we're offering a RFP, which is a um, referral for, for um, oh, I just wrote it down, a oh, oh, request for proposal for the uh, downtown square. Uh, a, an architectural firm to redesign or re something, re dedicate, re redesign. Um, did anybody else read that thing? Mr. Kessel, could you just explain the RFP? Yeah. Miss um, White, the RFP that you're referring to was uh, acted upon by the City Commission at the last City Commission meeting where they allowed uh, the RFP to be released to the public um, so that they could uh, receive responses from architects uh, that will, their charge would be to review the downtown site, uh, to review the existing um, plan uh, for that site, hold a couple of public hearings to gain the um, feedback from property owners, residents, and other stakeholders, and then um, present back their information and any plan changes that they would recommend. Uh, these, these dollars are actually been provided by the City Commission to the Dickinson Downtown Association and the Downtown Association will be the one who is kind of managing that process and then report back to the City Commission. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I think the word that I was looking for was redevelop. So, so uh, the, uh, the, the previous plan, right? So the that's all really actually vague, whether that means that you're going to be starting from scratch with the new and whether to what extent there will the old uh, the one that the, the plan that we paid for before would be anyway, it's 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 not understandable. And, and, the, and the reason I'm here is because on the 22nd, there is a deadline. This is the 18th. So a few days from now, this thing will be closed. So that means it was done, it's done quickly because it, uh, the first of the, this was only in the paper on the 7th, December 7th and the 14th. So it's just that some of us are uh, interested in this, what I would call frivolous, but but still important thing to some of us. It, you know, it's going to be a, a major thing that we do to our city. So it is important even though it's not like the things we've just been talking about for the past meeting. Uh, but the question, part of, I have, I have three parts of, of my plans to speak to you. And the first is, um, has the, the are, we, are we going to use the architectural firm that was used before? If, the, if you don't have, if you don't hire somebody else to review and re, uh, re, re, review the original plan, uh, are we going to use, uh, do we already know which d architectural firm we're going to use, even though you're advertising no. for a different one? No, Ms. White, no, we do not. Um, I have talked to two firms who have called to inquire, asking questions about clarity regarding the RFP. Um, neither of them happened to be the firm that did the original design, but that firm is absolutely welcome to submit uh, uh, under the RFP if they choose to. You know, the, well, it, did the original, the original one be that guy from Oregon or wherever? Washington State, yeah. Yeah, it'd be that guy. But 
So we would be using the plan that he brought to us and discussed with us at that time, a couple of years ago or so. Well, you know, okay, all right. Um, is the firm that's going to be hired to do this, this rediscover, uh, is there a salary already set for, or a plan for how much we're going to spend on that rediscovering process? The City Commission has uh, provided the Dickinson Downtown Association $40,000 to pay for this process. If the cost is higher than that, uh, it would either need to be borne by the Dickinson Downtown Association or they would have to come back to the City Commission and ask for additional funds. Um, but, but the budget is $40,000. So somebody's going to get $40,000 to redo a plan that we looked at some time ago, which was really, uh, of course, this is, in my opinion, I mean, that plan was, you know, it's not, it's, it doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's nothing. It was a bunch of pictures from other places. Well, anyway, never mind all that. Uh, but somebody's going to get $40,000. And we don't know if it will be another person from somewhere, you know, who knows where. I mean, like that guy from Oregon, he has no idea who Dickinson people are, what we really want, what will really work. I'm just saying that if we're going to be going through all this again, and do not my, do not hire somebody again to do a job for 40 or even 16 or 12 or 10 that's worthless to us. Uh, we need to not use a firm to tell us what they think we should have. What we should do is ask our own citizens to participate as though they really do care, to show that they do care and that they really are interested. And they are the ones who will know what will work in this town and what they want in this town. A firm, why are we going to pay a big pile of money to somebody to tell us what we should like? and want in our town. So I, I, I mean, I'll try to spare you because I know it's late and everybody's tired and wants to go home, and me too. But, um, but I, if this needed to be done before the 22nd, I'm saying do not, do not pay the, our money and waste our money on another so-called profit for us. And instead, encourage and I have a plan, I have an idea of how it could be done, but I won't bother you with that today. Just, I'm just saying, do not hire somebody else to tell us. Instead, get us to submit our own ideas and in some very clear ways, what I, which I'd be love to tell you about. But uh, get the, our own people to, do, to rediscover and redesign and redecide what we want to do in this town with the money that's going to be spent uh, on this project. And some of us are quite interested, and we don't necessarily belong to the Downtown Association because that's a little different subject, too. But um, okay. And I, I think, Ms. White, part of, part of the, the discussion will be uh, public input from the citizens of Dickinson. Well, I would like to help with some ideas that I have, which are so simple, so so wonderful, so so clear, so down to earth. It's sort of like going back to grade school and having posters set up all around the room from the various contestants for a contest of who's got the best idea. And it doesn't mean we'll have, and, and reward them with a little committee. I won't describe all the details, but. But it could be done so, so fine, and people will, if they don't participate, then that tells you something, too. It tells you they don't want it, they don't need it, why are we spending all that money? So that's the plan. I mean, that's just all. <laughs> Anybody want to ask me anything? I think Mr. Kessel can put Ms. Swartz in contact with you. Uh, uh, some of us, there, there, there's some, 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You're going to have to accept somebody. I know the person you're talking about is the, the designer and so on, and you talk about meetings and so on. I know there's been a, there must have been five to ten meetings in the community regarding what was wanted down here, and, I, and I've seen you at well, sure. five to ten of those meetings. Well, so. I, did not, I didn't <laughs> clap. You didn't see me clapping my hands. That, thing, that was I worthless. I know one of the gentlemen sat on your porch for an hour or so and visited with you while having lemonade or a drink or something, so I know you've been involved in it, so this shouldn't be new. Well, I'm not starting it new. Uh, the advertising for a new person to come the, to give them the money to redesign, to do our work. We ought to be doing it. It could be the same person, just, just you know. Oh, no. Are you serious? <laughs> well, this, Ms. Is, this Ms. is not funny. Miss what we haven't received any RFP yet. Right. Um, the two people that I've spoke to, the firms that I've talked to are North Dakota firms. By the way, you were accurate. He's from Portland, Oregon. I think I said Washington State. Oh. But you were right. It's okay. Portland, Oregon. Um, and our DRP does require whomever would get the award to, to <coughs> hold a public hearing. So they, they have to get input from local residents to what? make sure that uh, their local residents' ideas are reflected in whatever recommendations they make. Oh, who's going to be actually hiring this person? that you're advertising for? Who's going to? At the end of the day, there's a, a, dic, a local dic, this downtown task force, and that group is intended to be the ones to uh, pick the RFP, uh, make the recommendation to the commission. And they're the ones that you offered $100,000 for them to hire a new director so that that person who probably comes from Alaska or Timbuktu. Michigan. Uh, to tell, yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean they've already hired him? Yes. He's from Michigan. Oh the commission off, um, allocated $100,000, 60 for the executive director position, and 40 for this process that you're asking about today. You know, Ms. White, I, if I may, we did request to have some representation on that task force. So I, one or two commissioners will be a part of that process. So we, um, you know, I know I volunteered yeah. myself, so I would be more than willing to sit down with you and hear your concerns before I go into that meeting when it, when it does take You place. might want to let some of us who are not in that downtown association, who have other deeper, real roots in the whole process with being owners of some of the major uh, real estate downtown, you might want to hear from those people also because they don't see everything just the same way that the downtown association people do so i would say if you want a real broad view of this let some other people participate even though we didn't i don't think there'll be anybody denied an input on this project okay <laughs> all right i'll let you go home i i right. promise i did not come to uh turn anybody in for any kind of uh, <laughs> consensual harassment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Hey. Anyone else from the public that would like to come forward? Have a, any issues of city concern? Seeing no one from the public, we'll close down the public issues. I'll we'll look for a motion to adjourn. So, we have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are